<laughs> this is a journey into sound. A journey which along the way will bring to you new color, new dimension, new value, and a new experience. Welcome to the Geese Spot Podcast. I'm your guide, Katie Silcox, bringing you your weekly self-love sound bites. Join us for conversations around sex, spirit, and all things self-care. All things self-care. All things self-care. This is a journey into sound. One, two, three, four. You are a G-Spot Podcast with Katie Silcox. What's up, Ayurveda ladies? It's Katie here. Thanks for joining us. Where today in this podcast, we're going to be talking about the beautiful and, oh my God, sometimes challenging, um, practice of a woman with a ritual, of a woman having a ritual, of a woman who honors the morning and the night, but particularly the morning as a time when she is most ripe and most powerful to create change in her body and to also just sort of solidify her connection to spirit. And so I'm going to teach you guys about some basic Ayurvedic morning routines But what we're actually going to be doing is, as always, remembering the the love and the God and the presence that lives in our heart. And so um, let's just do a ritual to start this podcast off right. Wherever you are, now if you're driving, don't do this. Don't close your eyes while you're driving. It's generally a good rule of nature. But if you're not, and you can, um, even, you know, what I like to do is I love listening to podcasts while I'm doing like, uh, housework. So, um, if you are doing housework, you can stop and just, if you're seated, great. Just, let's just stop. And we do a practice in Shakti school called body yantra. And a yantra is, is the, uh, fact that your body is created of these beautiful, um, geometric forms and spirals and and when we enter into a relationship with our bones in particular we enter into the realm of satisfaction when i can interface and be intimate with my bones which is why i think bones are like super popular <laughs> like if you go through hipster instagram it's just like straight up bones and it's been like that for a couple years now and and i think it's because we all have this innate knowledge that we've lost our connection to our bones. And so just close your eyes or you can keep them slightly open and just feel into wherever in your body you think that you could focus your attention the best. So it might be the heavy bones of your thighs. It might be your hip bones. It might be your rib cage. It might be the tops of your shoulders or the forearms. It might be your cheekbones or your jaw bones. It doesn't matter. Just find somewhere in the body and commit to that place. And as one bone finds, the left bone finds the right bone, the right bone finds the left. You are giving your brain information about where your bones are in this room and on this planet. And when you do that, your little sweetheart feels safe to come up and forward in your body. It takes your senses about 90 seconds to get that information back up to your brain. So let's give it 90 seconds.
And I wonder if you wandered off. Because I kind of wander off every now and then. Just notice that and bring it back. And keep your awareness in your bones. And we'll slowly start to open our eyes and come back into the lecture. And so this is an example of just a mini ritual. There is a reason why in Ayurveda we start the morning with our rituals. They are ways of a woman connecting to the inherent power that she is. Women are inherently ritualistic. I don't know if you've noticed that. <laughs> we like it. We like to sit in circles. We like to gather. Um, you know, not to make it a gender thing, but, you know, we are biologically different. We have different hormones. We have different chemicals pulsing through these bones and, and brains and blood. And, and we love to sense into the sacred. And I think a big problem in our world today is that men and women, we've lost the sense of the sacred quality of the morning and the sacred quality of the, the evening. This rising of the sun, setting of the sun are these portals, according to Vedic, Tantric, Ayurvedic, and many, many other traditions. The sunrise and the sunset are portals into the new birth and the death of every day. And because they are the birth of the day and the death of the day, they enable us to connect to our own birth patterns that we store or that we may have stored in our bones, in our flesh, in our fat cells. And they allow us to enter into our relationship with dying when the sun sets. And so there are these powerful times of day. And uh, a lot of times because of our modern lives and all the screens and all the lights and all the cubicles and all the, you know, pumped in filtered air, we, we lose the sense of being connected to just the natural rhythm. And so even if you are living in New York City, I hope you are hearing me sisters up in, I'm down here in Virginia. Y'all got to come see us down here. But I have been up to New York and Philly and San Francisco and all you city girls. Y'all are some y'all are some sacred, sexy, sensual, nature-loving ladies. It doesn't mean just because you live in a city that you're disconnected. On the contrary, sometimes I find that because many of you listeners may be in cities, you have even more of a heart's longing to connect with Ayurveda, to connect with the laws of nature. And so especially if you're listening from the city, the morning routine is your power potential principle. You have got to commit to it even more than a Southern country folk. <laughs> Although I live in Charlottesville, right downtown, which is a, uh, a city, of course. So what is the, the basics of an Ayurvedic morning? And I'll tell you a little bit about mine, which is not the ideal. Uh, so it may make you feel better about yours. So um, most Eastern philosophies speak about this power portal that I mentioned between 4 a.m. and 7 a.m. And depending on the season and where you are in the, on the planet, you know, we'll have different times. But basically, right around dawn... And, you know, you know, and this is where Ayurveda becomes very individualized, because if you're a, a more airy person, what we call a vata, and if you're like, what are you talking about, then, you know, Google my name, Katie Silcox, and the word vata, V-A-T-A, and you'll find my book, and you'll find a million free resources from me and others on the doshas, which is something we'll explore more on this podcast. But basically, if you're more of a light and airy type of person with a smaller frame of your bone structure... Um, or you're somebody that has a vata type imbalance, meaning you've got a lot of exhaustion going on, you're overwhelmed, you're overworked, your immune system's low, you're experiencing anxiety or depression, all that kind of stuff, you know, we would consider to be an air imbalance and, you know, not to be a, a I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to doctorize anyone through the podcast, but, you know, most people who are of the Vata constitution want to get up, can, can get away with rather getting up a little bit after sunrise. If you're a Pitta constitution or a fiery constitution, you can get up around at the sunrise. And then Kapha people might do better with getting up before the sun rises. They tend to be a little bit more earthy and watery. And so I tend to get up, um, you know, with the sun 
And that changes if I've been traveling a lot for work, flying in airplanes, going through time zones. If my OJAS or my immune vitality is low, I let myself sleep as much as I want because I don't have the tendency to oversleep. That's not my tendency. If you're someone who has a hard time getting up in the morning and you do have the tendency to oversleep, then you might want to be a little more disciplinarian. But what I find is that for most modern women, we tend to be exhausted rather than overly rested. So, um, but in general, my body, when I'm in natural rhythm, I wake up with the sun. And I wake up and I really, now I don't even try to do this. It just sort of happens. But before I would do this as a practice, I would, I would offer gratitude to just being alive, for being healthy enough to get out of bed, to be able to witness the sunrise that's enough, right? And that, by the way, that might sound like, oh, Katie Silcox is super airy fairy. And no, I'm not. <laughs> like that was and, and it is, you know, a practice that I've cultivated of being grateful when I wake up. Now I don't practice it. Now I am grateful when I wake up and, and, it, and it's more that's my everyday orientation. But when I first started this type of stuff, it was definitely not. So the first thing we do in Ayurveda is we thank the, the sun for rising and we thank the earth for being here. Like, and then we just thank life, you know, that we're here and we have the, the ability to even get up. Um, and then I tend to make um, some kind of tea, herbal tea uh, or green tea. I know some of you out there drink coffee, no problem. Um, but what I would say is have some, let the first thing in your mouth in the morning be something um, that's that's more hydrating and cleansing. So typically we do warm lemon water, turmeric water is pretty good. I usually do a teaspoon or half of a teaspoon of trifola. If you're not sure what that is, we've got a link for you in the show notes where you can check it out. And oh my gosh, we should do a whole podcast just on trifola. Trifola is a miracle herb. If you have any problem, basically trifola will solve it. <laughs> uh, in Ayurvedic, the ancient text, it says, if you don't have a mother taste, take trifla. You know, it's like saying the worst thing in the world would be to not have a mother. Oh, I know some of you out there may be missing your mama if she's passed. And so Ayurveda would say, well, just take trifla. It solves everything. So I take, I take, I have a great mama, but I still take trifla almost every morning. Um, and I'll do about a half a teaspoon of that. Check out the show notes for a link for a really great brand. Um, and, and, you know, you could do commonly, we would do warm lemon water and lemon water is just great to get the whole peristaltic motion going, it cleanses the liver. It's awesome. Um, and then I'll sit and I'll read something inspiring. Uh, I'll take some of my tea and wait until I can have my quote morning evacuation, which is a nice way of saying poop. <laughs> so that's like, that's like supreme ritual, right? Like if you don't get that down in the morning, as many of you know, who are listening, like the days for me, like the day's shot, like cancel my appointments, cancel my workshop. Just no, Katie Silcox isn't doing anything because the poo didn't happen. So in my book, I talk about poo phoria. It's that feeling of elation after having an epic poo. That's a part of my morning routine. And I was telling my mom this morning, I was visiting her down the road and uh, spent the night last night. And I said, you know, just a good night's sleep, eight hours deep sleep and a morning poo for you. Like there's nothing better. Like I don't need anything else. I don't need a hot boyfriend. I don't need a ton of money. I don't need beautiful clothes. All I need is like poo for you and sleep for you. And everything else falls into place. And if you're if your like digestive system works and your sleep works, like, oh, sister, like, praise be to God. And I can say that because I've had both of those things not be in balance. And, you know, it's pure misery, really. So that is a beautiful feeling of gratitude when you have that in the morning. And then what I'll do is I'll, I'll do my morning abhyanga when I'm when I'm when I'm on my A game. And oh man, like I'm so good with so many practices. Abhyanga has been hard for me. And so it's something that I want to continue to, to commit to. But basically, this is the fancy Indian Sanskrits for um, rubbing your body in warm oil. 
you know, the, the sensory apparatus on the skin, the skin is outside your body. And so it's one of the tissue layers that, you know, you have six tissue layers of skin, but that outer dermis can't be nourished as well as the insides. And so we put oil and herbal oil in particular on the skin as a means of nourishing that outer layer, but particularly for the nervous system, um, this is super important. So if you're of a Vata constitution, and again, get my book, Healthy, Happy, Sexy. If you don't know what that is, it's like probably on Amazon now for like $4.99 because it's used. Like I'm not trying to sell y'all books. I'm super open about what I am trying to sell you. <laughs> it's not books because this lady makes like .00. 0.7 cents for every book sold. Uh, so sorry, that was a that was a tangent about the publishing industry, which I love my publisher, but you know, uh, I, I want you to get the book because the book is rad because it tells you about all this stuff in like everyday lady language. So Vata people in particular, and I am I am a Pitavata. Um, we need that morning abhyanga. It's just a way of really setting the scene for the nervous system for the day. Um, I tend to have a very sensitive, um, and that's a good thing, right? Nervous system, like I'm tuned. I can sense things, right? I'm a, I'm a sensitive person. And so putting that oil, it doesn't take away my senses. It refines them. But it also puts a layer on of the word for oil in, in Sanskrit is snecha, which means love, essence. And so I'm putting a layer of the love in the seed that comes from the oil on my body and it creates a little bit of a buffer between me and the outside world where things that are good can get in and things that don't need to come in can stay out so on and on we'll have a whole podcast probably on ayurvedic massage so i do that i actually put some kind of oil on my face um and i'll rub that on my face and that takes away some of the puffiness and just kind of wakes me up actually um i'll do a tongue scraping oh i forgot that so before I drink anything, the first thing I do after my fit, heat, feet hit the ground and I'm grateful and see the sun is uh, I scrape my tongue. And what that does is it takes off that first layer of toxins that are built up on your tongue from the sleeping and the detoxification from your liver the night before. So I scrape that off. Um, I usually do, I really like an, I like, a, I don't always do an oil pulling, which is where you kind of swish oil around I'll do a like an herbal gargle um so we have a link for that too if you want it in the show, show notes we have a link for the oil massage uh, oils that I love too um and then once I'm all oiled up oh I'll do neti pot neti pot with uh a little bit of salt and what I suggest is you can find a neti pot in the show notes. Well, you can find one anywhere online. Um, and I'll put about uh, maybe like fourth of a teaspoon of, of um, Himalayan pink salt. You can also do sea salt in warm water in the neti pot and put it in one nostril and it comes out the other. I'll do that. And then I will go and I sit and I sit for meditation. And I use that term really broadly. Um, so when I meditate, it usually involves some kind of really honest, heartfelt prayer about where I am in my own words. Um, I connect with my Ishta Deva, which is my personal connection to the divine. That might be Jesus for you. That might be Buddha. That might be nature. It might be present moment. It might be Durga. It's just your connection to God, goddess, G-O-D-D, -D E. SS. Um, I do that. And then I do my own internal practice. And sometimes it's five minutes and sometimes it's 45 minutes. And my practice always involves what I have coined body yantra, which is connecting to my bones and connecting to the bones and especially the bones in relationship to one another has been shown to dramatically reduce the feeling of fight or flight or collapse in the nervous system. That's been a big part of my journey. And so I do that every single day. And honestly, I can tell you guys um, that has been the single biggest change in my life is, is really just giving my brain the information about where my bones are. Um, we really go into this in Ayurveda school. And if you don't know what that is, you can check out katiesilcox.com. 
I've spoken about this in other podcasts. We have a whole year long training that teaches you how to learn this stuff, but also how to share it with other people. It's a certified Ayurveda health coach, lifestyle consultant um, training. It's actually a two year program. You can do one or you can do both years. Um, our next one starts in January of 2019. So check that out. So daily routine. Then I'm not done. I wait. I, I come out of meditation again. It's five minutes. It's 45 minutes. It just depends on the day. But I always do something unless I'm, you know, can't or I'm sick. So I, I try not to, after learning the hard way, be dogmatic about anything. But I also am pretty disciplined about it. Many, many, many studies have shown. And um, actually, I shouldn't say that. A few studies have shown, but many, many, many personal anecdotes and and professional people have spoken about the power of having a morning routine. I think there's, I can't remember the exact article where I read this, but it was something like the most powerful CEOs in the world all have this morning routine in some form or fashion. There's something about being able to create, manifest, be in the world, whether they're doing good things or not. It doesn't matter. They're powerful. And so I know all of the people listening to this podcast, you guys want to be powerful. That's why we named our school the Shakti School. It's the school of becoming more powerful. And just so happens we want to become more powerfully loving and more powerfully present, more powerfully authentic and more powerfully sexy and more powerfully like real. Uh, we don't want to become more powerfully narcissistic and egoic and all those things. You know, so the point is you get to decide what you empower. But if you do these practices that I'm offering up to you, I can say you will become more powerful. Um, and then that's why that whole piece about being grateful for the earth and the sun and being grateful for the love in your heart, like that stuff humbles us. Like we're a tiny speck in, you know, the whole cosmic scheme here. So um, I'll, I'll, I'll do that morning practice because I want to be powerful because I know that I have a purpose on this planet. And the more powerful I am, the more I can serve that purpose. Um, and then my other morning routine that I would say that I do every day is I'll go into the kitchen and I have an Instapot and I have a crock pot and I have a rice cooker. I've got a lot of devices. I have a Vitamix. I'm non-traditional Ayurveda in the sense that I'm super into my machinery. I'm a technologist. But honestly, I feel like I'm a reincarnated, Ayur reincarnated Ayurveda lady from, from India. And, and like she would be so down with like the modern tech. Um, so I cook. I throw some rice in the rice cooker. I'll put some mung beans to soak. Or I'll throw the mung beans and rice that I soaked the night before into my Instapot. And I put that baby on 15 minutes. Sometimes I'll throw some oats in the Instapot, turn it on 10 minutes. I mean, I am super into these machines. But I make everything homemade and from scratch. And so I'll try to chop my veggies in the morning. And even slow cook them in the morning. Or just get them prepared to cook them in the, in the, for lunch or dinner. Um, that might not be your bag, but what I'm suggesting is because I do that in the morning, it's this amazing feeling. I know that I have rice in the rice cooker. I know that I have my legumes cooked in the Instapot. I know that I have my veggies cut up and maybe even already, you know, low simmering. I know that. And so what's so fun is like now from 8 a.m. Uh, or even 7.30 a.m. till lunch, I don't have to worry about food. Um, and I do eat breakfast every morning and I, and I recommend that. Um, and we won't go into what, because that's going to be another topic. Um, but I just think having, making food preparation, a, a real important part of your, you know, a priority is the word, um, enables me to really get a lot done and have an amazing lunch. And usually I will, I would, I tell my students in Ayurveda school, like, it's a good general rule, like 24 hours, you want to eat the food. And so I've got, you know, a really great meal for lunch and a great meal for dinner. And that's usually how I roll. Um, if we were all living in a perfect world, we would have someone cooking our meals fresh, but that's just not real. And I'm all about meeting myself where I am in the world that I am and my students meeting their lives where they are. Um, can you get more involved and more perfect? Absolutely. 
Can you also eat things two days or three days in a row? Totally. Meet yourself where you are. But um, yeah, there's more food, prana, if you eat it sooner. So that's basically my morning routine. And, and then later podcasts will go into then what my business routines are um, to help you guys if you are doing your own thing out there, ladies. I love you guys already. I'm so excited about this podcast. Come check us out at Ayurveda School. Website is, for now, katiesilcox.com. We're going to have a new website up soon, but that's the one we're heading to now. Um, Yeah, great. Have an awesome day, you guys.